I'm excited to share our work entitled Contrastive Learning as Goal-Conditioned Reinforcement Learning. Deep reinforcement learning algorithms have achieved really great results in the last few years, but they've also become a fair bit more complex. Today, they're like an engine with many moving parts. One part predicts the future rewards. Maybe you have another part that learns a model of the environment. Maybe another part learns compact representations of high dimensional data. In this work, we propose a much simpler approach where we will have a single objective that simultaneously results in predicting the future rewards, learning a model of the environment, and learning good representations. We focus on goal-conditioned reinforcement learning. We want to learn a policy that takes as input some current image and goal image and takes actions to try to get to this goal image. We train this policy using a big data set of videos labeled with actions. Unlike trajectories in the standard reinforcement learning setting, these are not labeled with rewards. We'll define the reward function to be whether you reach the goal state at the next time step. But this reward function doesn't require reward engineering, and is defined purely in terms of the physics. We maximize the sum of these rewards, and the Q function is the same objective conditioned on some current state in action. The key idea of our approach is to use contrastive learning to build an entire reinforcement learning algorithm, one that doesn't require any sort of extra representation learning, reward learning, or model learning. I'll first explain how we apply the contrastive learning, and then the next slide will show how this is an entire reinforcement learning algorithm. Our methods are going to look pretty similar to prior methods for representation learning on video, for audio, on text. But the key difference is that our method will allow us to solve the reinforcement learning problem. We're going to learn two representations, one of states and actions, and one of future states. The data will be sampled from trajectories. We'll sample the positive examples using a state and an action and a future state from the same trajectory. Precisely, we'll use a future state sample from a geometric distribution that allows us to draw a connection with Q values. And we'll sample random states from different trajectories and push those representations further apart from each other. Now, intuitively, these representations will allow us to reason about what states are we likely to visit in the future. And importantly, we'll add, they will allow us to figure out which actions are likely to get us to the desired goal state. Here's how the complete algorithm works. We start with the data set, maybe from a different experiment, maybe from a random policy. We apply contrastive learning to learn the representations, and then we learn the policy to maximize the likelihood of the desired goal state. Optionally, we could go back and collect more data. We have shown that our method can work well even when we don't collect more data. Our method doesn't include many of the tricks and extra machinery that prior methods do, and our open source code is very fast. There are a number of ways of viewing what contrastive learning gives us. One is that it gives us an implicit model of the world, something that allows us to predict what's going to happen, but doesn't require regressing to high dimensional outputs. It can also be viewed as giving us a predictor of the future returns of a Q function, and it also gives us low dimensional representations of states. Training the actor has a nice geometric interpretation. Let's think about the representation of the goal state and the representation of the current state, which might be different for different actions. If we simply look at the similarity between these representations, training the actor corresponds to choosing whichever state action representation brings us closest to the goal representation. We can think about this as doing planning in representation space. Now, normally planning is hard. For example, if you greedily tried to solve this task by moving the arm to the goal, then you wouldn't pick up the block. But what we've done by learning these representations is make the planning problem easier. Greedy planning in the representation space is optimal. We evaluated on many tasks, including this bin picking task. The agent has to pick up the block and move it towards the blue bin. And it's really hard because we don't have reward shaping, we don't have demonstrations, and it's done entirely from images. Our first baseline is goal conditioned behavioral cloning, which is a pretty simple baseline that works really well, according to prior work. The second one is TD3 plus HER, which is a temporal difference method combined with hindsight relabeling. Only our method is able to solve this task. We evaluated baselines and a number of other manipulation tasks and observed that our method achieves better results on all but the easiest tasks. Please stop by the poster to learn more, such as experiments and future directions. Thanks.